Claire Cameron, welcome to Book Television and Harper Collins in Conversation with Authors. Thank you. It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. So The Line Painter is your first novel. Yeah. Tell me about the experience of writing a first novel. <laughs> How was it? Well, I um, say it was a struggle until I decided that nothing might happen with it. Okay. And that was when it started to really get good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, your first novel, which you've just written, mm -hmm. The Line Painter, has come out. And uh, it's a, uh, at times frightening, at times bleak, at times sexy. It's quite a complicated book. My book is um, sparse and it's um, tauntly written suspense, I suppose. Um, I leave a lot to the reader. Um, I'm asking for a lot from a reader, I think, for them to fill in gaps um, and my characters are as much about what they don't say as what they do. Um, so it's very simple and clean, but also requires an active mind. Um, it's about a woman who um, is running away from her life, essentially, and goes on a, uh, takes off impulsively on a road trip, um, and her car breaks down. And the person who comes to her aid is um, a man who paints the lines on the road, and he's out doing the lines uh -huh, in the uh -huh. spring. Um, and he stops to help her, and it's their story. Okay. Um, yeah. So there is a tremendous amount of suspense in your book. You could have written a completely different book. Mm. You could have just written a romantic tale you know, yeah. of, of, of love found in the North. Why did you choose to write a suspense thriller, really? Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, actually, because a lot of my influences aren't necessarily um, suspense-y, mm -hmm. I suppose, but um, I was, I, you know the first part of Enduring Love, Ian McEwan's book with the balloon, mm -hmm. um, and it, there's a fantastic scene that's probably about 50 pages. They just, I remember reading it and having this like really strong reaction, and just for the moment that I was reading that, that book was at the center of my world, and it, it just, was thinking about nothing else. And I guess I sort of started on the suspense um, going that route because I wanted to do that for someone else, see if I could create something that just absorbed you so totally. Well, another thing that you explore is fear mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and claustrophobic fear Yeah, set against this expanse. I mean, you know, northern Ontario, nobody's around, cell phones aren't working. Tell me about that. Uh, mean, tell me about that process. Um, that's interesting you say claustrophobic fear, because I actually wrote the book while I was living in London, mm -hmm. in England. Um, and I had this one day where I kind of got the idea. I think I was a bit homesick, um, and I was coming home from the, in the tube on the subway during rush hour, and um, I was in this human traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so crowded there sometimes, and it's shoulder to shoulder and moving like, you know, kind of like a herd of cows through, <laughs> through the crowd. Um, and I came up into Piccadilly Circus, and I remember just like finally getting on the street level, and then there was all these signs and people, and I just felt completely overwhelmed, mm -hmm. especially as someone who's grown up in Canada and used to a lot of space. And I started kind of almost fantasizing about all the space that's here in this country um, and especially up north and how, you know, the sky comes down on either side instead of just being, you know, on top of you like it is in London. Um, so that was, yeah, that was that kind of feeling of claustrophobia actually was one I was legitimately having um, and missing Canada in a way too. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.